Welcome back to the Weather Center, folks. Happy Wednesday, June 4th, 2025. A bit of a later upload, I will openly admit, and I do apologize if you were expecting me to pop off maybe about an hour or so ago. It's been a very busy day, so I'm just getting on camera now, but I'm getting you the content that I have promised you, and we're going to talk tropics here, get you all the latest information, because to tell you the truth, things are once again trending backwards, and I'm going to update you on everything that I'm seeing to keep you ahead of the game and keep you in reality, if you will, because social media is ablaze with all sorts of different hotspots. Before we do get started, though, please consider clicking subscribe if you're brand new to the channel and you want those reliable, timely, timely being the key word, again, I do apologize, and accurate tropical weather outlooks as we rock through the 2025 hurricane season. Please give that like button a little nudge, as well as consider sharing this content to those you believe would benefit from it, especially since things are looking pretty wonky out there there across the Atlantic Basin. The Eastern Pacific, on the other hand, is having a ball. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Here is a look at National Hurricane Center's homepage. Code red once again in the Eastern Pacific, and in fact, we have some new numbers here. A disturbance is expected to begin to show itself. It looks like we already have a broad area of low pressure beginning to move off towards the west-northwest, generally at about 10 miles an hour. National Hurricane Center currently gives this ball of energy about a 20% shot of doing something over the next two days and approximately an 80% chance over the next seven days. So I would not be surprised if we have yet another invest. Second name on the list out there for the Eastern Pacific will be Barbara. And to tell you the truth, given what we have in place and just how excited the MJO is going to be propagating across the Eastern Pacific to its entirety, I would not be surprised if we got a third, if not even a fourth fourth name storm for that basin. Now, the fourth one's going to be tricky. We're still watching a couple things that could favor the Caribbean and especially the Bay of Campeche. I'll walk you through that as well. You can see here we switch over to the National Hurricane Center page for the Atlantic, and we're done. The feature off the southeast coastline has more or less washed out. It's become very expansive, very broad and stretched out as a result of the upper low that's been slowly moving off towards the east. It was stuck over the eastern gulf, kind of influencing our weather here in central Florida, but both of those features are now being picked up by the mid-latitude pattern coming off the United States and pulled up towards the mid-Atlantic. We're still going to keep a close eye on our friends in the Caribbean, especially Central America, portions of southeastern Mexico, the Yucatan, and the Cayman Islands, portions of Jamaica and Cuba. I'll show you why. You come over to the full disk satellite shot, and even though there's nothing tropical really going on just yet, we have a lot of action down there in terms of our Central American gyre beginning to really unveil itself. Now, let's set the stage. We also have an upper-level trough that's still kind of stuck over parts of the Ohio, Mississippi Valley, the Appalachian Mountains, extending into the upper Gulf. That's also helping to create a slew of difluent flow, increasing our wind shear too. That's another reason why that little old feature down there off the Florida coastline really didn't have much of a fighting chance. If it stayed offshore, managed to stay in that favorable quadrant of the upper level low that helped to kind of spark it to begin with, then maybe Maybe. We also have some Saharan dust that's going to be working in very soon as well. Notice the entire Atlantic Basin, especially the MDR, the ITCZ is quiet. We have a tropical wave here, not a whole lot with it. Truthfully, folks, Atlantic is its a dead stick for all intents and purposes, but... We've got a lot of heavy rainfall, showers, and storms in Gulf, Central America to its entirety, also getting into the western extent of Venezuela, the northwest corner of Colombia, and everybody from Panama up to El Salvador are buffeted by all those tropical thunderstorms created by large-scale lift. That's exactly why the eastern Pacific's getting ready to get going. Our area of disturbed weather is right in through here. We're going to be watching as it slowly marches off towards the west-northwest if it continues to consolidate, which it more than likely will. Now, at the start of the video, I mentioned we're starting to trend backwards. What do I mean by that? Let's take a look at the latest European outlook. So this is the date and time we've been pinpointing for a while now, June 9th through June 16th. And if you look, believe it or not, 
we've gone backwards. Those shades of blue out there over the Yucatan, through the Yucatan Channel into the Gulf, are actually below average anomalies for tropical cyclone activity. Now you can see we still have a large pocket of very enhanced values just to the immediate left, west of that small corridor of the blue colors, which could still indicate something trying to cross over as our pattern flips, but this is definitely a vast difference than what we saw last week. And I do think I know why it is we're starting to see below average values forecasted out there. It's not saying that it's not going to happen. It's not saying that the likelihood is completely diminished. Let's not get carried away. But the signal is not as evident as before. It's not staring us in the face like it was previously towards the end of May. It's kind of shrunk quite a bit. The GFS is on an island by itself. Has it out for Florida? I'll go ahead and say it out loud. The GFS still wants to pull something up at about the 275 to 300 hour mark of its forecast model run. Each individual model run, 0, 6, 12, you name it. You look at any of them and you've still got a hurricane projected. That is the only model showing anything. So naturally, confidence is very low. Eventually, it could be right. But it's definitely not singing the proper tune right now, and none of our other models are picking it up. You take a look at our latest 12Z European probabilities for tropical depression formation, and yeah, you know, we still have a marginal signal. We're still going to continue to watch the Southwest Gulf kind of hugging the eastern shores of Mexico, very reminiscent of Chris and especially Alberto from last hurricane season. And that's kind of something I've been thinking about behind the scenes. Will the steering patterns and the general favorability for eventual tropical development mimic that of 2024 because we're kind of seeing almost the exact same thing we did quite literally 365 days ago now i move over to our wind shear and i'll take you full screen to get my face out of the way you can get a bit of a better look yourself from the gulf through the entirety of the caribbean and then across the tropical atlantic we still have very unfavorable westerly wind shear it's literally screaming across the gulf out of the northwest and then going across the caribbean and through the mdr which is also like Likely why it is so quiet out there in combination with our Saharan dust. On top of that, this is windy.com. We haven't used this in a while, but we're looking at our mid-level flow at about 5,000 feet. And if you look across the Caribbean especially, this is what folks were believing would knock barrel down last hurricane season a couple notches. It really didn't do the trick, unfortunately. But again, this is why it's considered the tropical graveyard. You look through there at 5,000 feet, we have winds anywhere between 30, 40, even upwards of 50 knots closer to Jamaica and the southern fringe of of Haiti, Dominican Republic there, and then it continues to rock off towards the west, coming in out of the east through the Cayman Islands and then fanning out once it hits the Yucatan Channel there. So lots of unfavorable wind flow. You look over the eastern Pacific, though, thanks to the MJO, the Central American Gyre, kind of biasing further towards the west into the tropical Pacific, a lot more of an agreeable environment for stuff to get going. And notice where the winds are more tame, more relaxed, that is where the general highest amounts of our thunderstorm activity continues to form. Now, this is something that I've also been very interested in and been watching closely over the last several days is the European model has started to trend us out of a very dominant negative Pacific North American oscillation, which would mean negative indicating ridge over the eastern U.S. and then a trough extending over the western United States. The more we nudge ourselves into the positive values here, the more this is going to kind of flip backwards. We're going to get ridging back out west over the desert southwest, the four corner states, and an extension of at least a week or a somewhat amplified trough over the eastern United States. And you can see here, particularly around Friday the 13th, we're going to get a little nudge in the pattern here very soon. That's what's going to continue to pick up that upper level Low and what was once highlighted by National Hurricane Center and get it out of our neck of the woods. But then notice after that point in time, we go even further into a bit of a positive phase, at least for a little bit. So I'm wondering now if as we move through time, our ensembles and our probabilities try to come up a little bit since those trade winds will likely begin to relax a little. We won't have everything completely bottled up over Central America, bullied into the Eastern Pacific. You can kind of see the same thing here with our North Atlantic 
Arctic Oscillation, the combination of our Icelandic Low in the North Atlantic and the Bermuda Azores High. We're going to be coming out of this enhanced phase into a bit more of a neutral setup, which would mean that the pressure gradient over the Atlantic across the Atlantic entirely is going to also weaken a little bit. So conditions should improve. We'll see. We'll see. The models have been trending rapidly in this direction, so they may not be fully caught up yet. We're just going to continue to monitor. Here's a look at the dry air out there. The Saharan dust is alive and well, although a lot of that tropical moisture over Central America is kind of washing it down some. You come over to the NASA dust model here. I'll take you full screen again so you can see. As we scroll through time for us Central Floridians, here within the next couple days, we're going to be directly beneath the main plume or the first wave outbreak, I should say, hot off of Africa. It has completely traversed the Atlantic, moved through the Caribbean, the Greater Antilles, and it is going to be in our area as we rock through this weekend. Slowly but surely, it washes out thanks to all the projected rainfall we're going to be piling up. And then shortly after that, notice we do still have some whispers of Saharan dust moving through the pattern, but there you can see clearly as we approach Friday the 13th, June 14th, and shortly thereafter, we will be more or less in between Saharan air layer outbreaks, these enormous dense plumes. So that should help to kind of create a little bit more of a ripe environment, allow things to stay a little bit more moist and active down there. We shall see. This is also something that's been up and coming. I will zoom you in just a little bit. Pardon me, adjusting the screen. I want to take it a little bit larger so you all can kind of get a better look alongside me. This is what we're looking at here. Now, originally the Euro control member, the control member of the ensembles, were showing a bit more of a standing wave setup over the Eastern Pacific. This is a bit more of a progressive look. Notice we still have some very strong anomalies, those darker shades of teal and deep blues. But instead of getting kind of stuck, up over the Eastern Pacific, Mexico and Central America. Now it kind of wiggles on down towards the, we'll say Southeast. I know that's not the direction here on the chart, but that's where it's moving, kind of downwards and to the right. And that to me says the Euro is expecting a bit more forward movement, a little more oomph behind the MJO as it moves across. So we could start to see a bit of a signal try to show itself. Today is only June 4th. This was the first day of when it is we were expecting a bona fide signal to start to show up. And if we continue to see the pressure gradient, the height levels out there relax in terms of the PNA, the NAO, the NAO <laughs> and the MJO also become a bit more progressive, that could change things a little bit. You kind of see the same thing here. This is 12Z on Thursday, June 12th. Next Thursday, we're starting to see a lot more of the favorable anomalies, the rising motions take shape across much of the Atlantic, the Caribbean, getting up out of the Eastern Pacific, and especially by Friday the 13th into the second full weekend of June, that is when we start to see a lot of the velocities favor the Atlantic. So if anything is going to try to manifest itself, it could be around Friday the 13th, if not shortly thereafter, once these very vigorous rising motions begin to settle down a little bit into that weekend, the 14th and the 15th. As a result, Climate Prediction Center does still have us for that above 20% shot of tropical cyclone action, both between the dates of June 11th and June 17th, and then a continuation of that in the Bay of Campeche between June 18th and June 24th. I also wanted to do a quick update on our ocean heat content. This has slowly but surely continued to rise, especially in that very favorable source region of the Central and Western Caribbean, spreading up into the Gulf. The main development region of the Atlantic is also starting to see those favorable isotherms lifting further towards the north into that 10 degree latitude range where our tropical waves will typically move. And then zoomed in very close Looking at our NOAA coral reef, coral reef, coral leaf, <laughs> you can tell I'm tired, coral reef anomalies, the MDR is now almost fully, fully above average between 20 degrees north latitude and 10 degrees north latitude, and especially between 10 and 15, right in through there. You can see those darker shades of oranges in between the mustard colors. And I do think the warm pocket in the northeast corner of the map here is just going to continue to funnel down on the eastern side of the North Atlantic. Gyre, that canary current, could definitely feed down towards the Cabo Verde Islands in the west coast of Africa. 
So there you go, a bit of a conglomerate video. I know I kind of struggled a little bit. It's been a long day, a long week, even though it's only Wednesday. I hope you all out there have had a very phenomenal week up to this point, and the second half treats you good. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your Wednesday evening to join me here on the Weather Center. If you notice, I've been a bit more hesitant to do live streams after the internet struggles that we faced during the last couple streams. We found some good momentum with these shorter long-form videos, so We'll definitely keep this repetition on the move and you will get continuous content from me. I'm just going to kind of better deliberate exactly when it is I want to hop on a live stream to have one of those conversations with everybody. So once again, if you've stuck around to the end, please consider kindly hitting that subscribe button. Make sure your notifications are turned on. Please feel free to share this information to those you think will benefit from it. Drop a comment down below and I will get back to you at my earliest convenience if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. And give that like button a little nudge. I can always use a little bit more algorithm in our corner to get some of this quality information out to you, especially as we get into a hurricane season that could quite literally be filled with a lot of drama. There's already a lot of stuff in circulation out there. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you all so much for being such a spectacular audience. We will see you again very soon. But until next time, this is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.